Hello Legends, welcome back to the channel. I'm Eric, this is Horaceworks and we're back with the Ute. Today it's coolant time. I'm going to show you how to swap out the water pump, the thermostat, all the coolant hoses, the coolant overflow bottle, how to flush the whole system and put it all back together. Got a couple of days here, the weather's really nice. I shouldn't need two days, one should do it, so let's get to work. This expansion tank is slightly cracked there. So yeah, I'm going to replace that. And then while I'm at it, all the hoses, I'll get to the water pump, the thermostat, and uh, flush all this out. But before I do any of that, you're gonna need some things. It goes without saying that you're obviously going to need some coolant. This is what I got. The green stuff is the, the stuff that goes in the barras. And uh, what I like to do is buy the uh, concentrate. You can get these as premix as well, but I like to buy the concentrate because I'll have a little bit left over. And then uh, once I do, what I'll do is I'll just half, half fill it with water. And then I've got some spare if any time I sprout a leak or whatever, and I can put the rest away that I don't use. So anyway, gonna need coolant. Get yourself some gasket maker as well, just in case you might not need this, but you wanna have it handy, just in case something goes wrong with the replacement gaskets that you're gonna use. Also, before you do any of that, a coolant flush. This is always good to use every time you replace the coolant in the car because there's a lot of build up in there, just crud and dirt, deposits, residue from the block from years and years of use. So uh, yeah, it's good to get these uh, and flush the system out uh, before you put the new coolant in. That's the place to start. All right, there ain't nothing to it but to do it. So let's go do it. Start the car, turn your heat all the way up and your fan all the way up. So what that's going to do is circulate the water through your heater core as well as your engine. Now you're going to need to let this uh, coolant flush circulate for at least 20 minutes. Put your car in a safe place and go have some lunch. Alright, it's been 30 minutes. Woo, it's hot in here with that heater on. The car is now warmed up. We're ready to turn this sucker off. Before I do, I'm just gonna get it on some ramps. All right, there we go, up on ramps. Gonna turn this sucker off. So all that flush is now circulated through all of these hoses and the block and the expansion tank. So now, just let it cool off a little bit and then we're ready to crack this thing open. So to loosen this belt, it's quite easy. Take a 3 8 extension bar and stick it into the tensioner, just like that. And then turn clockwise and slip the belt off. So at this point, you've gone as far as you can. You're just gonna need to let things cool down now. So uh, yeah, I'll see you in a few minutes once uh, this engine block has cooled down. I'm back here after a little while, the engine has now cooled down and uh, yeah, I've switched to nitrile gloves. These are waterproof, grease proof and super stretchy for good reason. We're about to drain the coolant. If you want some of these, I'll leave a link in the description below. So we've got good access now. There is our water pump, that's that one. We've got good access to the bottom hose. 
and the hoses that go into the coolant expansion tank. Here's the top hose going to the thermostat as well. So yeah, nice and good access to everything. I know a lot of people remove the power steering pump when they change the water pump. I'll see if I need to do that. If I do, you can put a socket through there to undo the power steering pump. There are two ways to drain this coolant. One is you've got a drain plug just there, uh, which you can undo. But because I'm going to need to undo these hoses anyway, the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna undo this bottom radiator hose basically. So that's where the coolant's gonna come out for me. You can attempt to do it through there if you want, but uh, just keep in mind that's plastic and brittle and if you break it, you might need a new radiator and you need to undo this uh, radiator hose anyway. So I'm just gonna do it from there. So let's go underneath and uh, get wet. Yeah, and you will get wet because, well, I've not once drained coolant in a car and not gotten it everywhere. But get one of these ready. You don't just obviously want to put it all over the floor or um, into a drain. Um, yeah, collect it and take it to a recycling center. Just to try to catch the most of this I can, I'm gonna grab one of Nana's old best sheets and put it on the floor. So the hose you're going to be dealing with is this one. Now mine has the original factory clamps on it and the way these worked is you would tighten these up and when they got to a certain torque they'd snap off. So uh, yeah, there's actually no real way of undoing these. The best way I found to do it is to grab a pair of pliers and just grab the end and just twist it like that. Obviously I'm gonna replace this when I put this hose back on. Well, it won't be this hose. It'll be a new hose. There we go. After a little bit of fan dangling, that does come loose. See if I can do this from up here so I don't actually get super wet. Yep, there it goes. I'm gonna let that do its thing in a couple of minutes. There we go, that's mostly out now. And to be fair, the coolant is looking decent. The coolant system may be the only thing in this car that was maintained by the previous owners. Okay, so now that most of the coolant is out of the car, it's time to flush this system. And the way to do that is through this hose here. So the first thing is I'm going to remove the thermostat because right now the coolant is cold so the thermostat is shut and to circulate everything through this needs to uh, uh, come out basically. So I'm going to undo this bolt and remove the thermostat. 13 millimeter. Your aircon condenser is sitting just down there so just grab a rag and pop it down over it so we don't damage it but uh, that should be it now we'll pop this up yep there we go i'm just going to move this out of the way so some people put rtv sealant around here but as you can see it's not required because what these thermostats come with is a rubber gasket so that's the thermostat itself and then around the thermostat will be ooh, one of these rubber gaskets and this one is pretty much caked on here so I'm just gonna put a piece of tissue in there and get this started here we go pull it off. So yeah, make sure that your new thermostat comes with one of these gaskets. Now what I like to do to clean up surface areas is a plastic blade. These uh, little razor scrapers are really handy. You basically um, can load these with plastic or metal blades and when you're finished with the work it tucks away nicely. Also it's got a little pouch to store extra blades 
and uh, yeah it's a really handy tool if you need one of these i'll leave a link in the description below so you can pick one up it's really good beautiful everything is nice and clean in here now ready for the new thermostat we're obviously not going to do that just yet what i am going to do is put this back There we go, just tighten it down a little bit. So now when the water throws through here, the thermostat um, won't be blocking it. So now we just gotta undo this top hose. Okay, so same deal up here. We've got one of these factory hose clamps. So I'm gonna take a pair of pliers real quick and undo this and then pull this hose off. There we go, so that hose is now off. And this is a perfect spot for me to feed a hose in through here, run um, the water through the engine. The other thing I'll mention, uh, which I forgot to show you guys, while the engine was cooling down, if you've got a gas powered car like I do, um, the hose, this one, that goes from the condenser to the air box is in the front here. And you can easily remove that. Uh, basically, this hose just clips in here like that. And to take it off, you just squeeze this uh, clip together like so and it pops off and when you got both sides off you can literally adjust and uh, remove it from the car completely so that it's not in your way while you're um, flushing the coolant so anyway here we go we've got this off I'll just take this hose clamp off which we don't need anymore and I'm gonna feed the water through here run it through the engine and then what will happen is eventually it'll come out the water pump side um, down out of this bottom hose and it will go into the uh, the bucket down there well that's the plan anyway hopefully most of it ends up in the bucket but yeah looking at the coolant real quickly uh, this actually looks quite good it looks like it was changed quite recently so uh, but in any case i've got the new coolant so this is going to a recycling center do not flush this down the drain uh, because the rats in your drain are going to turn into giant mutant monsters so right here is a perfect example of why you do need to flush your cooling system when you change the coolant. There's nine liters of coolant in that car and the bit that just came out is, that's five liters and that's two liters. So I'm gonna say about six liters of coolant have come out, which means there's another three liters in there, in the block, in the radiator, etc., etc. So uh, with the coolant flush still in the system, in that other three liters that's still in there, it's very important that um, you know this stuff is flushed out. So yeah, something to keep in mind when you drain the coolant, not all of it comes out, so flush it. Next, what I'm going to do is take this uh, water pump hose and undo it here and rotate it so that it's not facing out here, but it's facing down that way. That way when the water comes out, it's not shooting sideways, it's gonna shoot downwards. I'm gonna to need to undo this uh, clamp here, just like with the others, and then rotate this hose so that it faces down. And now this way, the water goes straight into the bucket. Now, to do this job, you could just do it with a garden hose, but I've got one of these fancy things. What this is, is basically a garden hose extension that lets water out through there that's where you plug in the garden hose and it puts pressurized there through here through an air compressor and what this will allow me to do is run the water through and then once the water's out completely I can basically run some compressed air through it as well to pump out the rest of the water um, you can get these from auto parts stores such as Sydney Tools or Total Tools. Good little thing to have if you flush coolant on more than one car and you do maintain your own cars. But if you don't have that, just use a garden hose. Attach the end to the hose there with some gaffer tape, open the tap and you're good to go.
All right, check it out guys. So this thing is running so clear now, I reckon I could drink it. Nothing, absolutely nothing is coming out of this block anymore. I filled up all of those containers and a 20 gallon drum full of the coolant. So that's going to recycling center. But there we go, that's nice and clean now. So your block is clean, but you're not done flushing yet because you also have to flush the radiator. So the radiator at the moment is isolated. And if you're not uh, replacing the radiator, if you're keeping it, you are gonna need to flush that too. And to do that is quite simple. Remember this top hose that's running into the thermostat? Well, just undo that and attach it to the top of your radiator. Then the bottom radiator hose that's currently running into the bucket, undo that from the water pump and then attach it to the bottom of the radiator here. And then that will run into the bucket. Now with this one, because it's just a radiator, it should only take pretty much one bucket. So I'm just gonna open the tap. It's coming out really nice, really clear. So uh, yeah, looks like this radiator is in good condition. All right, and with that guys, that's it. The whole system is flushed. We've flushed the block earlier and now we've just flushed the radiator. So we're good to go. I'm gonna get rid of this now cause uh, it's no longer required. Cool. Oh man, look at this guys. Look at what's coming out of the hose. It's like degraded pieces of rubber. Hmm. So if that one's like that, chances are good that some of my other rubber hoses are also degrading. So now I'm really glad that I bought a replacement set and they're silicon, so they shouldn't degrade the same way that uh, a rubber does. Yeah, look at that black residue. It's basically the rubber just degrading. But yeah, all of that stuff is basically circulating through your coolant and settling at the bottom of your coolant tank. Actually, let's have a look at this. Oh yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but at the bottom of this white bucket has settled a bunch of tiny little black particles. Yeah, okay. Check your hoses because they can also cause problems. Cause there's things like that that can build up and uh, yeah, cause you overheating issues and just basically start clogging up things. So I'm gonna replace all the hoses. I'm gonna replace the tank as well. And then the water pump and thermostat as well. The radiator has been flushed. So uh, we're probably gonna be all right for quite a while. So um, let's keep going. So now that bottom hose has been removed. That's just over there. The top hose has also been removed. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the rest of these. Um, see these little skinny ones? There's one here and one going into the radiator as well. I like to keep these on the expansion tank and that way when I size up the new green ones in my case that are down there, um, because it's still attached to the tank, I'll be able to tell into which hole each one goes and where they go. Just gonna undo this one. Now some of these can be stuck on, so just be careful. You don't damage anything when you take these off. I'm talking more about your thermostat housing here, of course. So sometimes it's good to have a pick handy just to uh, get in there and uh, loosen this stuff up. Try not to stab yourself. Yeah, so try to avoid that. <laughs> Basically stabbing yourself. All right, I think I finally got it. Yay, there it goes. So considering how this one went, I'm a little bit more worried about this second one because it goes into a plastic radiator. So I've got my fingers well and truly crossed that I don't split this plastic radiator tank. No, we're good, we're good guys. Yeah. All right, nothing to worry about. <laughs> this bottom hose here, this bigger one, again, I'm gonna leave it attached to the tank I'm going to remove it from the radiator itself. That way everything's attached to this old tank and I can use it as a guide to attach the new hoses to the new tank and where it all needs to go, all that stuff. There's the gas converter. If uh, you need to take a good look at it, 
now is a good time that the cooler bottle's out of the way. But everything looks all right with my one. Just give the whole thing here a bit of a clean because hey, while you're in there, right? So now, before I put these new hoses back on, I'm just gonna replace the water pump and the thermostat. And I'm gonna start with the thermostat because it's nice and easy to reach up here. So I'm quickly gonna undo the two 13s. One, two. And I'll take this housing off and give it a quick clean and just get rid of this gasket material. And the cool thing about these plastic blades is when they're worn out, You just pop a new one in and you're good to go. Yeah, that's better. All right guys, so I've given this a nice thorough clean. I've brought in a scotch bright pad as well, just to kind of smooth things out. And I've also gone over this just real quick with a scotch bright pad. So this is pretty much smooth and good to go back on. It's time to put the thermostat back in. So this is the part number you're going to need and the thermostat should come with a, a gasket. So you just wanna put the gasket onto the thermostat like so. There we go. And this is good to go back in. So you just drop that in. Then this goes on here. There we go. So now that that's on there, so get your torque wrench out and set it to 20 Newton meters. There we go, 20 Newton meters. All right, so now that that's done, let's do the water pump. Now, a lot of people have trouble with the water pump. They can't get to the bolts, um, especially because this pulley is in the way. But I'm gonna show you the easiest way to do this so that you don't have to fight this pulley. And actually, all you're gonna need is a very simple tool. And funnily enough, it's the tool that you need for the power steering pump pulley. Ford knew that um, things were tight in here, so they made the water pump pulley and the power steering pump pulley uh, come off in exactly the same way. So as long as you get yourself a power steering pump pulley kit, okay, this is the one I've got and it works really well, um, you will be able to take the pulley off your water pump. So if you have a look, I'll take this cap off and you'll see that it's the same cap that's on here because this pump, this pulley, is pressed on exactly the same as this pulley. So as long as you got one of these kits, you will be able to take this pulley off just as if you would take off the pulley off a power steering pump. And this isn't very expensive, it's you know tens of dollars, not hundreds of dollars. And it's good to have in your garage because now if you ever need to take the pulley off your pump, you got the tool to do it. Also, all Ford pulleys are pretty much the same, so this is good for other cars too. For example, I changed the pulley on my power steering pump on the Ford Focus I've got, and I've used this thing. So I'm actually very thankful for um, Ford for making this water pump pulley the same as this because I can use this tool for pretty much all of it. So let me show you what to do in order to make your job super, super easy. All you're really gonna have to do is pull this wheel off. Now, whatever you do, don't use one of those claw pulleys because this is plastic. And if you wanna retain or keep this pulley and put it on a new water pump, you don't wanna break this. And one of those claw um, pulleys will grab on here and it will literally crack it and tear it off and you'll be left with this center section in place. But this pulley kit um, avoids all of that. Here is the kit and it's actually quite simple to use. So this center section here is what you're going to need to take off the pulley. We've got a little uh, locking sleeve here. So we'll remove that and then two half sections like that. So these lock on to the pulley itself and then this would go in there like that. So just wind this out all the way pretty much about pretty much about there so now we just put this 
over this sleeve and then this little collar goes over the top of the whole thing and then you just wind the bolt in until it bottoms out. There we go. So now you've got a sleeve over the top of this little collar on the pulley itself and then you got one nut here and a bolt there. So what you're going to do is wind this bolt in and what that will do is it will pull this thing away. So quite simple actually. So I'm gonna take a 16 spanner I'm gonna put it over the, the bolt and I'm gonna take a shifter and put it over the nut. There we go. So now that this pulley is off, if you need to, you can reuse this. There's nothing wrong with it. I've got a fresh one, so I won't be doing that. But uh, yeah, that's how you would take this off. And now that this is off, your access to all the bolts is really, really good. You don't have to fight this thing at all. So there you go. That's how you save yourself a ton of time and a ton of headaches. Just get one of these. It's only a few bucks. Okay guys, at this point I have decided to remove the power steering pump, mostly because I want to I do want to have the best access possible to the water pump uh, mounting surface so I can clean out, clean off the gaskets when I remove the pump. Um, and from what I can tell, it's three bolts. So let's quickly remove that. So one's through here, the second one's in here. Yeah, there it is. That's the second one there. All right, that's loose. Then the third one's just in there. Now I've got a feeling that these will all be different lengths. So just keep in mind which one goes where. That's bolt one, that's the top bolt, and sure enough, that's a lot shorter. And bolt three. Should be able to just slide this away. I'm just gonna move this out of the way ever so slightly. Yeah, I'm just gonna rest it there. So I'm glad I did that, because now I can see the back of the water pump where that hose goes into the water pump and I can also get a better access to all this gasket area. So the next thing we've got to do is undo this bracket here because a couple of these bolts are actually the water pump bolts. Actually, I only think this one's the water pump bolt. So it's one, two, three, four. So we need to take this bracket off and they're just 10 mils as well. That one's loose. Again, watch where each bolt goes. There we go. The bracket's off. I'm just gonna put the bolts back in to their holes. So I know that which one went where. Yep, sure enough. One is shorter than the others. That one. Okie dokie, there's not much left to do here except to undo the rest of the water pump bolts. And again, these aren't very tight at all. All right, and then there's just one more down here. Again, I'm gonna take note on which bolt goes where Chances are there will be different lengths. So that's the bottom bolt. So really, well, there's a bit of water in there. There you go. I knew I'd make a mess of my floor eventually. Uh oh, this is interesting. Yeah, okay. So check this out. There's another bolt back here. Can you see that? Just there. It must be holding on this pipe. So let's undo that as well real quick. Let's put a couple of these bolts back in just so that I've got some leverage to undo this bolt. So this back bolt here 
is holding on this water pipe that comes out of the water pump. And it looks like all it does is it's a little bracket that pushes in onto that pipe so it doesn't leak, which is a very good idea, obviously. Anyway, we'll take these two bolts back out and now we should be good to go. There it goes. And that's the gasket that goes in there. So make sure you've got a new one of these. You're gonna need it. Also check this out. So the way this works is there's a metal plate and then squishing this metal plate is a gasket on the water pump side. And there will be another gasket up against the block. Here it is. So this metal, this metal plate is being sandwiched by two gaskets, one on each side. So make sure you've got both. All right, but this is my old water pump and I don't need this anymore. Actually, yeah, look at this. We've got a little bit of corrosion there. So that would also have been circulating through my cooling system. So it looks to me like the water pump and the hoses were quite old and deteriorating and maybe the thermostat as well. The gasket definitely was. I think it's a good time to replace all of this. So at this point, I'm going to clean this area up. I obviously won't make you watch all of that. It might take me up to an hour to get all this crud off of here. But basically you want to clean up this surface really, really well. Clean up all the surrounding areas too while you're in there. And then it's time to reassemble. So I'm just quickly going to do that and come back to you. Okay, I'm not going to lie, that took forever. It's all cleaned up now and I've got to tell you, it took me, uh, I don't know, maybe a couple of hours. It's now dark here. But uh, yeah, I used everything from a scraper, like a metal blade scraper to some Scotch-Brite. Also, um, I got this goo, which helped a lot. Let me see if I can show you. So this thing here is pretty good. It's 20 bucks at Repco or at an auto parts store. And what it does, it basically softens up the baked on hardened gasket, which was very, very crucial for me because um, from what I could tell, this thing bonded to the metal. Um, no amount of scraping could, could really move it. So I needed a lot of help to get that gasket off. So yeah, just bear that in mind, prepare yourself. By far the hardest part of this entire job. I reckon taking that gasket off took as long as it will take me to do the rest of the job. Yeah, just prepare yourself. But now it's off, so we're ready to put the water pump back on. Okay, so now for the water pump. So this is the part number if you want to get this as well. What it comes with is the pump, the spare gasket that goes on top uh, of the uh, metal plate. And it will also come with a spare o-ring to put on the water pipe so i've just put a little bit of lithium grease on this to make it slippery and what i'm going to do is put in the top two bolts ah, there we go so it goes on there like that so you're sandwiching the metal plate in between the two gaskets and then just to hold everything in place I'm, i've got the two top bolts for the water pump and i'm just feeding them through the metal plate and the gaskets just so that everything stays in position like that okay so that's ready to go I'm just gonna take my little o-ring and I'm gonna put it on the water pipe I'm gonna bring over the pump and get it started just gotta find the bolt holes see if I can get the third one in as well underneath yeah no problem with that one I'm just going to Push these down. Okay, so I've got three bolts in. I've got my little bracket here that goes into the back and holds the water pipe in place. Hey, that doesn't seem to want to go in. What is going on? That doesn't want to seem to go in. All right then. Let's see what the dealio with that is. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So you know why this back bolt won't go in? Because they haven't threaded the actual bolt hole.
to uh, take <laughs> to take this screw. So mm, looks like I'm going to have to thread it myself. Now this is no big deal. It's an M8 bolt, so what you're going to need is a tapping tool. That's an M8 extension, and you just need to. It's alloy, so it shouldn't be very hard at all to uh, to do this. In fact, it's going in like butter. This is alloy, so don't force it. But yeah, any simple tapping tool will do this job. You could also probably just drive in the M8 bolt. But uh, I got this thing, so at the risk of cracking this water pump, which I don't particularly want to do at this time of night. It's now eight o'clock, nothing's open. So I'm just going to persevere with this tapping tool. But if you're feeling brave, you could probably just drive the bolt in. Okay. I can see the tapping tool coming out the other side now. So I'm probably good with this. I'll just go a little further. There we go. Done. One tapped bolt hole. Moment of truth. Yeah, beautiful. So if it goes all the way in, yep, all the way in, very nice. All right, I can finally put this water pump on. Oof, what an epic journey. Let's see if this thing goes on. Wouldn't it suck to cross thread this now? But no issues, beautiful. Now these water pump bolts are also 20 newton meters, so that's two zero. So now I'm going to put this bracket back on and it goes on like so. Yeah, beautiful. Now this one is a water pump bolt as well. So we're going 20 newton meters as well. Okay, all torque down to 20 Newton meters. So we've got the water pump back on and because the pulley wasn't in the way, I could torque down all my bolts perfectly. Okay, I think the next thing I'm going to do is put this bottom hose on. So from the water pump down to the uh, radiator. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of WD-40 just to get things started. Okay, so now that that bottom hose is on, I'm going to attach the power steering pump. These two bolts are the same. The long bolt goes on this side. All of these bolts are 25 Newton meters. So that's looking good. The next thing we're going to do is put the pulley back on the power steering pump. This is the part you're going to need. So that'll go back on just like that. So we're gonna obviously need to press this on. And to do that, we've got our handy little power steering pump pulley tool. So this time we're not using the center, we're gonna use the one on the side here and this long bolt. So you need this long bolt and this section here. So unscrew this bolt. So basically just wind this bolt on about that much should do. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit of lubrication here just to uh, help help things slide on easily. Anything will do, just, just to help this thing get started. Then you're going to get your bolt and you're going to screw it in to the power steering pump all the way until it bottoms out. So now, a 17mm 
will be able to turn this nut here and put a ratchet on the end of the bolt just to hold it and start winding it in. So it'll start off quite easy and then the further and further along you go, the harder it'll become as it starts seeding. And you will feel it bottom out. There we go. So that's bottomed out there. Wind the tool off. And that's sitting nice and flush. And that's it. That's how you put a water pump pulley onto a water pump. So this is really good because I managed to torque down all the bolts to the correct specs so I know that the water pump won't leak. And I didn't have to faff around and you know, work around everything. And there's no way to torque the bolts down with this in the way anyway. So yeah, a really handy little tool. Definitely recommend getting one of these. There's the part number again, if you want one. Now I'm switching to this side and I'm gonna put the top hose on. So again, just a little bit of lube to help things. Okay, so now that this side is hooked up and this side of the radiator is also hooked up, I'm gonna put the expansion tank on and this is the new one. Now this hose kit, this green hose kit, comes with hoses that go into the heater core at the firewall over here. But I've got to be honest with you, they don't fit very well. This one is okay, but for the life of me, I can't work out where this one's supposed to go. And um, I don't think this kit was made for um, the LPG cars. And the other thing that um, bothers me is there are three coolant hoses back here and there's only two in the kit. And the other thing that bothers me is the kit never came with these long hoses that uh, travel down to the radiator and across the, um, the front of the car to the thermostat housing. So I'm gonna have to reuse these, which is a total, total bummer. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can find these hoses in silicon somewhere. But yeah, just, just something to keep in mind. Um, this kit does not come with uh, these hoses, which yeah, is a total shame. But it does come with this hose, which goes from the expansion tank to the radiator. So let's put that on next. So yeah, I'm gonna ditch this for now, but if you wanna put them on your car, you don't need me to show you that. Unscrew, take the old ones off, pull this one, unscrew it on, right? Okay, next I'm going to put the cap back onto the water pump. And now while I've got room, I'm going to put the accessory belt back on. All right, with the belt back on, I'm gonna put these final two hoses on, which is a total bummer. I'll see if I can find some somewhere else. If you remember, I uh, had a bit of trouble taking this off. So uh, the end of this is frayed. So what I'm going to do is just trim this ever so slightly so that uh, we don't pop any leaks. Short hose on the left and long hose on the right. All right, so we should be watertight now. Only a few things left to do. Next, I'm going to put the thermo fans back in. Two 10 mil bolts. Don't forget to plug it in. And of course, if you've got a gassy like me, you're also going to have to feed in this uh, conduit pipe. Click. Done. And now, don't forget to put coolant in your car. What I tend to do is 
put the put the concentrate in first and I just add water, add water, add water and let the water pump through the mixing. Does that make sense? This car has a nine litre capacity in terms of coolant. So that means at a 50-50 mix, you need four and a half litres of coolant and four and a half litres of water. What I tend to do is put the four and a half litres of concentrate coolant in and then add water until it tops up. And then I'll turn it on, I'll run it hot, I'll let the system um, aerate itself, uh, burp the system basically, and then I'll add water, add water, add water until it's at the full mark. And that way I know rain, hail or shy, irrespective of how much uh, water goes in this thing, I know that the right amount of coolant, four and a half liters, is inside the engine. So let's do that next. Let's add the coolant. Open sesame. Those of you who have followed my channel before um, know about this. I actually like to use one of these cut down soft drink bottles because the mouth is bigger than a funnel and uh, gives me a nice big opening. And it's free. Okie dokie. So there's six liters of coolant in here and I'm not gonna stop pouring until it reaches one and a half down here. Yeah, that's good. Now, from here on out, all I'm going to do is add water, just water. I'm gonna put this away. So I've got a liter and a half in there. What I'm going to do is fill it up with water to the three liter mark. And then I've got three liters of premix coolant ready to go if I ever sprout a leak. So the water that goes in this thing, it's true, you should use distilled water. It takes out all the minerals. Now, you. Here's what I do. You don't have to go and buy distilled water. Do you have a filter tap at home? Or do you use one of those Brita filters in the fridge? Well, if you do, you can use that because what that does is it filters out minerals so you can drink it. So if it's good enough to put in you, it's good enough to put in your car. I've been using it for years, no issues at all. Alrighty, so we're good to go here. I've got the water up to the cold maximum mark. So what I'm going to do now is start the car, uh, turn the heat on, cycle, full blast heat, and I'll wait for the thermostat to open. At that point, this water level is going to drop because uh, water will start circulating through the system and go into the heater core, etc., etc. So I've got my demineralized water ready to go to uh, top this up as soon as I need to. I'm just gonna keep the cap on like that, just in case we get any big bubbles that will spill everywhere. All right, let's go start this puppy. All right, heat on, full blast. And we'll just wait for this thing to warm up. Checking for leaks. Turn the stats okay. Still on max. This will drop as soon as the uh, the thermostat kicks open. No leaks so far, which is good. Okay, this is what I've been waiting for. So it's 20 minutes in and the car is just about to open its thermostat. I'm seeing a few little bubbles now. So we're just gonna watch the level. It's dropping now, just a little bit. There it goes. It's now on the water line. Let's see if it goes down any further. And if it does, we'll fill it up. Okay, I'm 25 minutes in and it's a bit of a non-event. It looks like uh, there wasn't a lot of air in there to begin with. 
had that little burp around the 20 minute mark but um, overall the levels have stayed consistent so yeah I think we'll call that done for now what I'm going to do is uh, turn this off let it cool down in the morning I'll check the levels again so I'll see you then so it's the next day here and we're going to finish up. This won't take very long at all. Overnight, the car has cooled down and what happened was the coolant level had dropped to a cold level. So I'm just spending time this morning to uh, top that up to the maximum cold level. And then after that, I'm just uh, checking for leaks. I'll put the air intake back on and finally I'll reinstall the splash guard underneath the car and that's pretty much it she's done So there it is guys, that's how you overhaul the cooling system on one of these BA or BF Falcons. <sighs> what did I learn? Well, the hardest part of this job will be the water pump and not because the water pump is hard to install but because that gasket, man, that gasket, get ready for it. I think it took me as long to clean the old gasket off of the mounting surface as it did to do the, the rest of the job combined. Prepare yourself, you're going to need some patience to get the old gasket off and you do need to get it off because things are gonna leak if you don't clear it all out of the way. But all in all, not a really hard job really. Um, the thermostat is super easy, all the hoses are very easy to get to. In fact, I, I gotta say, um, you know, a lot of people knock forward and um, you, you, they break down all the time and whatnot, but I don't know if that's necessarily true. I've had a few Falcons in the past and as long as you look after them, they're actually very, very robust and actually pretty well engineered. Everything is really easy to get to. The only hang up here might be the water pump and the bolts to the water pump. Ford has thought of that. So basically the pulley that goes on the water pump is attached the same way as the power steering pulley, which uh, basically makes it super easy to remove as long as you've got one of those uh, pulley tools. And uh, once you got that pulley off, it couldn't be simpler. All the bolts are super easy to reach. You can torque them down to the correct level. And I did, I put the pulley back on and I haven't got a single leak anywhere. Um, yeah, I, I really can't say any more than that. Um, other than I hope this video has helped you out. I make these videos for people who like to work on their cars and have a go at home in their own garage. And if that's something that you like to do, then yeah, I hope you appreciate uh, me making this video. And the best way really that you can thank me is just click the like button and hit subscribe if you wanna see more stuff like this. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, it tells me that I'm doing things right, it gives me enthusiasm to do more of these. And uh, YouTube knows as well, so we all win, right? So in any case, this was my attempt at replacing the hoses, the thermostat, the expansion tank, the water pump, flushing the whole system on a BA or a BF Falcon. Did you like the results? If you did, let me know. If not, then comment below and let me know what you would have done differently because I want this video to be a definitive guide for anyone who's doing this job. And if in the comments you can add something to make this job easier or better or different, then do it. I want to see it. I want this to be a definitive guide, not just the video, but the comment section as well. So enough chit chat from me. Thank you for watching all the way through. If you've made it this far, I hope some part of this video helps you out. And if it did, go ahead and try this on your car. I'll catch you next time. Okay, as a bonus, if you've made it this far, firstly, thank you. And here are all the tools you're going to need for this entire job. First, get a ratchet and some extensions. The sockets you will need are a 7mm, a 10mm, a 13mm and a 15mm socket. You will need a pair of pliers. You will need some Phillips and flathead screwdrivers. 
you will need some fluids, a degreaser will help and some lubricant to get the hoses on. Get some rags or paper towels ready for obvious reasons. Get a funnel ready. A pick helps get the hoses undone. A 10mm spanner will help. Have a wire brush ready to clean things up. This CRC gasket stripper really helped me out to get the gasket off of the block. This razor scraper is very handy for cleaning up rubber residue. I sell these and I'll leave a link in the description below. You will need a 3 8 extension bar to get the accessory belt off. You will need a torque wrench to torque things down. Then this pulley kit is super helpful to get the water pump pulley off and have a 17 and a 16 mm spanner and a shifting spanner ready if you're going to use this kit. Have some work gloves ready because you don't want to cut yourself up and make sure that they're high grip and I'll leave a link in the description below. And finally, have yourself some safety glasses ready because coolant in the eyes is not fun. Thank you for watching this far. I'll catch you next time. Please consider subscribing.